Print and Cut Sticker Time with the Silhouette Cameo 4. Hey there, welcome to my channel. This is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative. And I'm in Silhouette Studio about to show you how to make some print and cut stickers. If you notice, I've got the business edition, so I may have a few extra tools on my toolbars, but don't worry about that. Everything I'm showing you today, you will be able to do with the standard free version. No problem. All right, so I've got a brand new mat here and I'm gonna go over to the right toolbar and the very top icon, I'm gonna click on that to open the page setup menu. And on the first tab, you'll see it shows the machine, the cutting mat and the media size. And I'm gonna change my media size to letter, eight and a half by 11, because that is the size of the mat sticker paper I'm going to be um, printing on. And then the other thing I need to do is across the top of the page setup box, you'll see three tabs. I'm gonna to go to the last tab, this sort of dark mat, and this is for the registration marks. I'm gonna turn those on. So the registration marks are what tell your machine that you're cutting the stickers on where the images are placed on the mat so it knows where to cut. So that's how it identifies everything by the registration marks. Now all it's gonna print when you print this with your stickers on them are the black box and the lines that you see here. But this gray crosshatch pattern is here to show you where not to put your stickers or where not to put your print and cut design. You don't wanna overlap these gray crosshatch uh, marks at all because the machine needs a fair amount of space around the registration marks to, to read them properly. So bear that in mind. Another thing I wanna point out is this red box here. That is the cut border. So you don't wanna have anything outside of the red box because the, the machine won't be able to cut it. Another thing I wanted to mention is something I am not gonna use today, which is print bleed. Print bleed is if you wanna turn that on if you're making stickers where you're cutting all the way up against the border of the image. So like you're gonna have a colored image and you're cutting right around the outside edge of that colored image. What that does is it adds a little bit of extra color or extra print area just right around the cut line so that you, if you turn it on, to so that when you cut, you avoid getting like a white outline or if the cut is off just slightly, getting that like a white area of the sticker paper around your image. So that is what, so you would turn print bleed on if you are doing colored stickers. Now the stickers I'm doing today, I'm adding a white border to, so I don't need to turn that on. All right, so we've got our page totally set up the way we need it. And now I'm gonna go over and bring in my sticker designs. So I'm going over to the upper left and I'm gonna to go to file and then I'm gonna to go to merge. And I have this watercolor Arctic animals set. These are PNG files, which are an image format. And I'm gonna be cutting stickers out of these guys. I love these because, well, there's a narwhal here and my nieces love narwhals. So I figured gotta have some stickers for them. And then I'm kind of personally in love with orcas and then humpback whales. So they have those. And then they also have these nice little extras like hearts and flowers and leaves and stars that you could add to other kinds of like, you know, envelopes or cards when, even if you're not using like marine animals for those. So, what I'm gonna show you is this guy here. So I'm gonna open this star design because it's a multi, multi image design. And I'm just gonna pull it down here. Now I'm gonna make this a lot smaller eventually, but for now I'm just going, I'm gonna use this for the trace because it's gonna demonstrate a couple things you, problems you may run into. Now, something to note is that PNG files are, have a transparent background. So you can kind of see, let me zoom in here. This image file already has a cut line all the way around it. And that is convenient and makes it really easy um, to work with. But if you're using like a JPEG 
file, you would it would just show up as a square. Like the cut line would be the square around the border of the JPEG because JPEGs have like a white background normally added to the image. So I'm going to show you how to trace the image, which you don't necessarily have to do for a PNG image, but in the event you're using a JPEG, you will have to. So I wanted to show you how to do it. So I'm going to zoom out just a hair. All right, so we're going to go over here to the trace menu, which looks kind of like a, I think it looks like a piece of toast with a square around it. And I'm going to open that up. Now there are three ways you can trace things. I'm going with just the very basic version, which is the first tab. And it will say, and the first thing you do is click select trace area. And then you just have to click and drag a box around the image you want to have traced. Now the first thing you'll notice is that these yellow dots kind of appear on the image and that is what is initially being traced. Well, obviously that's not enough because I want to create basically a solid trace of these stars because I want to put an outline around them. So the way to kind of mess with this, fix it really, is to go to the threshold here and, and just kind of keep bumping it up until you get to a solid image like so. Now there may be times where you wind up with something that's more like that or it has like sort of these gray openings in it even when you're all the way up at 100%. When that happens I change the scale which is down here a little bit and just keep increasing that until it completely fills in. Now this looks weird on here because the threshold will actually do do it fill it all in but I'm just warning you because I have other images in this pack where it doesn't totally fill in at 100% on the threshold. And that's when I take the scale and bump that up. But now that we've got it totally solid, I'm going to hit trace. And you can see like an even stronger red line around this image now. So I'm going to just click and drag the image away and you'll see the outline trace of the stars. So to create a border around my stars here, I am going to click over here on the offset menu or panel, I guess it is. It's a star with like this outline around it. It is also, when you click on the item, it is also up here on the upper toolbar. So you can click either one and you'll see because I had it selected, automatically it puts this offset onto the item. Now that's a pretty thick offset. I want to make it smaller, so I'm going to go over here to the distance area. And you can drag the slider, but I find it easier to just like click on the down arrow, the down arrow, to make it um, like, you know, narrower. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to hit apply. And so what that's going to do is it creates a separate layer that is just the outline. So that's actually good for, for our sticker design here. However, I wanted to show you, and so I'm going to delete the trace. I wanted to show you a couple things that you could also run into that might create problems. Like up here, you'll see there's a space between this upper star and the big star. And then there's this hole here. There's an opening here and an opening here. And these are pretty narrow and not that big. And if I shrink this design down, which I do plan to do, it's going to be very tough for the cameo to actually cut that as a separate object. So, or like, you know, with a line, a separation between it. So I'm going to get rid of these smaller openings. And the way I'm going to do that is going up to the shape menu here, or drawing tools, and grab a rectangle and draw over the first opening, go back to my select tool, click and drag to select them both, and then I'm gonna right click on them and weld that together. And you'll see how that takes the opening away, like the opening just disappears because it's welding the, the little square onto the stickers. So you can do the same thing for any other areas that you know seem like they aren't gonna work so well. Okay, so when I 
when I drag the sticker, the image back over, I think it looks okay. And then especially if I click and drag on it, to select both layers, and I'm gonna go up here to the scale panel, which is kind of where you deal with the size of it. I'm gonna lock my aspect ratio lock so that the height and the width change proportionally as I change like the width of it. And then I'm gonna just click and drag on this corner handle to like get it down to uh, right around, yeah, three quarters of an inch. That looks fine. But the last thing I wanted to show you was, let's say like your, um, your, your image is like not quite correct in the center of your outline. In that case, what you'd want to do is click and drag to select them both. And then you're going to go up to this tool up here on the upper toolbar, which is basically like the align tool. And you're going to center it vertically by clicking this one and then center horizontally by clicking this one. That didn't really change anything. But now you see like the, the, the image is perfectly centered on the outline. So those are the main things that you need to do to bring an image in, trace it, make an outline, and then turn it into a sticker. Now I'm gonna actually click and drag to select both of them and then go up to the top, top toolbar and hit group just keep them together so that I know I won't get anything messed up when I move them around accidentally like I can do very regularly. Another thing you want to make sure, as I mentioned earlier, is when you put your stickers on your sheet to have them printed, again, make sure you do not go over either the red box or any of these gray hash, hash marks. If you do, you can wind up um, getting an error on your machine when it tries to scan the registration mark. So just not worth it. Now if you want to make multiples, since these are grouped together, I would just right click on them and hit duplicate. And then you can just kind of space them out in the line or however you want to, to get multiple images. Okay, so I'm going to actually bring in a several other images to turn into stickers and then I will be back to show you the next step. Okay, I have all my stickers laid out here on my sheet and I want to zoom in a little bit because there are a couple ways that you can make sure that when you go to send over here on the right, you don't get like a double cut line where there's the cut line around the outline and then the cut line around the image. So first I'm going to give you the hard way and then there's the easy way. So the hard way I guess would be to click on it on the make sure you got both layers selected. Now this is grouped so they are. Right click on it and then you can weld. And so that will make it one object. And you can do that with everything and normally it works fine. Occasionally I have run into places where when you with the outline if the outline's too thick it'll duplicate parts of the image in the outline I don't know why um, but so that is one way you can you know make your life easier however it's probably not really necessary because <laughs> let's go over to send okay so if we look down here you can see these are still have two cut lines. It's got the cut line for the, the image and then the cut line for the edge. Whereas this, like the whale, for example, just has the outside one. That's because this has been um, welded. Same with this guy, same with this, but not this. And there's the one we just did versus one that hasn't been done. However, what you can do instead is click and drag to select all of them and then go over here to your tool one and hit cut edge. And then you'll see that it only cuts the outside edges. So that's really the quickest way to have that work. I have had instances where it doesn't work correctly. So that's when I've had to go in and weld. So I wanted to show you both ways to do it. 
All right, so now I am ready basically to print and then cut. So I'm going to print. So I will go to File, Print. It shows me the print preview. So you can see I don't have anything really near the uh, registration marks. <laughs> and so if you hit print, it's going to bring up your printer dialog box. And this is where I always want to go to preferences. And I'm going to be printing on a matte sticker paper. Now my printer doesn't have the option for sticker paper, like under paper. So I'm going to just leave it on plain paper. But I do want to make sure that the print quality is, for my printer, high. So you want to set your printer to like, you know, whatever the highest setting is for the print quality. If you're going to print on glossy paper, glossy sticker paper, I would suggest changing this to photo paper. All right, so I'm just going to hit OK. And it's going to print. Oh, I guess I have to hit OK. And then I'll right here. And there we go. So there are my stickers printed out. And you can see my sticker paper. And I've just loaded it onto a regular standard silhouette mat. And so I'm going to load it into the machine. And I've got my auto blade in tool one. Okay, back over in the software you'll see that I've chosen the material as sticker paper white. Basically just click the drop down menu arrow and then just scroll down until you get to sticker paper. There are a number of options and I just did white, sticker, sticker paper white. Now the default on this is Force 14. For the paper I'm using, which is kind of a thin Paper. I'm going to change the force to 12. Whoops. Go down to 12. That seems to work better for that paper for me. You can see we're on cut edge as we were before. It's on auto cut, auto blade. The machine is ready, so I'm just going to hit send. And then we'll go to the machine. cute. Look at how cute those are. And it printed great. The back is totally fine. Not cut through at all. And it, that was a breeze to weed. You saw me do that really quickly. Um, super cute. I cannot wait to stick this whale on something. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. Print then cut with your Cameo 4. It's really, really a lot easier than you think it is. Don't be intimidated by it. Just try it, okay? Here's a close-up look at those stickers. Pretty cute. Can't wait to get those whales on something. If you got something out of the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, especially if you're interested in more Silhouette Cameo tutorials as linked right here. Thanks so much. Have a great day.